Hey, how's it going everyone? Saints fan back again with another GTA Online Q&A. Today I'll be answering some of your guys' questions from Twitter. But speaking of Twitter, I'm actually doing a shark card giveaway for the upcoming Coil Cyclone. So go in the description. I'll leave a link to it down there. Go follow me on Twitter and retweet to enter if you want a chance to win. And speaking of the Coil Cyclone, like I mentioned yesterday, it looks like that's going to be the next vehicle. But we don't know when it's coming. We don't know if it's coming tomorrow because of LA Noir. Or if it's coming later this week or if it's coming next week so for the people curious about that that's sort of what's happening anyway hopping into the questions this first question from jason is actually very interesting because while it's not technically related to gta this story has been everywhere if you haven't heard of it you're probably living under a rock but battlefront 2 the new game that's going to be coming out i think this week or something there is a huge huge controversy with it regarding their microtransactions and this question not a gta question but what's your opinion on the battlefront 2 microtransactions what do you think of the game will you be getting it to answer the second question i was going to be getting it because i was really looking forward to the story and i was really looking forward to just you know having another star wars game but i'm not going to be getting it now i may wait to see what they do if they actually fix the problem but for those wondering the microtransactions in the game, the way it works, they have the heroes. They have like Darth Vader, Luke, and all them. But they actually put them behind uh, like a, a play wall, if that makes any sense. Basically, you have to play for like 40 hours of game time to acquire enough credits to purchase these heroes, to purchase Darth Vader, to purchase Luke. But the problem was that you could also buy these players with real life money, aka microtransactions. And this, like I said, has been freaking all over the internet. Uh, so many people are hating on EA because of this. My opinion is obviously it's bad, but I want to tie it to GTA because we all have somewhat been a part of this with GTA Online. We all see what Rockstar are doing. They, they are, you know, purposefully making the gameplay in a way where it sort of encourages you to buy shark cards, right? They, they make stuff cost a lot of money where you have to grind a ton to get the amount of money you need to buy whatever vehicles you want. But it looks like EA with Battlefront 2 here, they, they like took that to another level. I mean, 40 hours just to get one hero. And then there's like, I think 10 heroes or something. So you would have to pay, you would have to play so, so much just to unlock these people. And this whole situation is very interesting, especially just to see how it plays out with the gaming community, because if they don't fix it, you know, how is the game going to do? Are people still going to buy it? And that is going to affect other gaming companies. Like, let's say Take Two were planning to do something similar to this. They were planning on going even crazier and even hard, more hardcore than uh, what they did with GTA Online. Well, maybe they see the outrage and the reaction to this and they change their stance a little bit. They're like, okay, we can't actually go too far with these microtransactions and with this grinding. We actually have to tone it back a little bit. That'll be, that'll be what's sort of interesting to me just to see what other people, other gaming companies do. I have mentioned that microtransactions are not going away anytime soon, but it really just depends on how the gaming developers or companies put them into their game. How do they incorporate them? So I am definitely interested to see how this whole Battlefront 2 situation affects Red Dead Redemption 2 and if it makes Take 2 sort of change their position on the whole idea of microtransactions. Let me know in the comments, though, what you guys think about the whole situation, if you know about it. But yeah, it's definitely been a crazy couple of days for Battlefront 2. Next question, going back to some more GTA stuff. Reno, how do you think the I'm Not a Hipster 2 update would cost, or how much do you think it would cost overall? So I've been thinking lately that the last DLC Smugglers run was sort of a test, a, a gauge, just to see how far they could push the limit of how much stuff costs without the community completely just turning against them like Battlefront 2. And I think at the, what was it, 60 million or 70 million dollar price tag for everything in the Smuggler's Run DLC, I think that was a little too far and I think they sort of realized that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that the next DLC is probably gonna be 40 to 50 million. I think they're using GT Online to gauge interest and to get some information and data from players on how they react to certain things for their future games. So I'm sort of thinking that with the next DLC, whether it is Hipster 2.0 or whatever the case may be, it's not going to be like Import Export and the gun running about 25 million. I think it's going to be a little bit more, but it's not also going to be Smuggler's Run. That's what I'm 
sort of anticipating. Morowaki, will the buzzard still reign supreme once the hunter comes out? No, uh-uh. The, the hunter is going to be the new champ of the sky. It's just got too many good things about it. The fact that it doesn't blow up with one or two uh, RPGs, you know, that's incredible. It's got the flares. It's got the barrage missiles. It's got the homing missiles. It's got the explosive cannon for your co-pilot. It's got the bombs you can drop. And it's even on par, I think, in terms of speed. So, yeah, I, I, the buzzard... It was nice for the last couple of years, but the Hunter is going to be the new king of the sky, at least in terms of helicopters. Brendan, how does it feel to own pretty much everything in GTA Online? That's an interesting question, because I pretty much do have everything in GTA Online. It's, it's good and bad. I mean, it's great because, yeah, you don't really need to, to worry or you're not grinding endlessly for certain things and you can pretty much do whatever you want but i think that's also a negative because sometimes you know i get on gt and it's like oh what do i do now you know i don't don't really need anything so you end up just doing like nothing but i'm kind of curious if you are someone that owns pretty much everything how do you feel about that like do you like the fact that you own everything or do you wish that there was still stuff you left or you didn't buy so you could work towards getting it thomas should i save up for the mansions so like i don't know what other people or other youtubers are telling you guys but i've said before it's not 100 percent guaranteed this is all just speculation it's all just rumors and leaks we don't know what the next dlc is we don't even know if it's going to be hipster 2.0 that was just again another rumor another leaked rumor that you know has been out there so i wouldn't like hold too much stock in any of this stuff you should save up for the next dlc but it may not specifically have mansions jack's tastic if the next dlc is supposed to be a hipster 2.0 then, can we see some upgraded versions of the cars from part one? For example, a Panto Custom Donk. I would kind of like that. I mean, that'd be... If they took some of the cars from Hipster 1 and made some crazy and funny versions, yeah, why not? It's probably not going to be for everyone, but hell, for the people who want some stupid thing like that, sure. You know, why not, why not put them in the game? I, I kind of hope we get a lot of vehicles like the rapid gt classic i absolutely love that car and i love the customization on that car so i'm hoping we get a lot of stuff like that maybe even for benny's because benny's is or hasn't been used in quite some time so that's sort of what i'm looking forward to but yeah i would like to see some old stuff get some new upgrades and then the final question from george do you think the release of la noir will give L an la noir update to gta to get people to buy the game because rockstar love money and new dlc for game equals money i don't know about that however your question did get me thinking what if them releasing L.A. Noir is sort of a, a gauge of interest for players wanting to be a cop? One thing, since the beginning, we've said as a community that we want a police DLC. We want to play as a cop or have the option to do that. So maybe with this L.A. Noir release or re-release, they're seeing if it does well. They're seeing if there's still interest out there for players who want to play that sort of character or that sort of profession. And if there is, if it does well, then hell yeah, maybe we do get a police DLC sometime next year for GTA Online. That's like the one big DLC that is somewhat GTA related that hasn't been done. So that's sort of what I'm thinking, but that'll be the question of the day. Do you or would you want to play a cop DLC in GTA Online or do you think it should just stick to being criminal related stuff? Anyway, that is it with the video. Thank you all for watching. Please drop the video like if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more awesome GTA content. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.